when Steve Jobs first set out on this journey, which would ultimately change not only the way we use computers, but really the way we live our lives, Steve Wozniak was right by his side. The co-founder of Apple joins us this morning. Uh, good to have you with us and our condolences. Hi. Uh, good what, to be here. What a sad day. It, it's, it's a very sad day, and you will... In all honesty, the two of you will be forever linked um, for founding Apple, for the pranks that we hear that you two played in high school. Uh, is there one memory in particular that when you heard the news, one memory of your time with Steve Jobs that, that really stuck out to you or popped in your head? No, when I heard the news, my mind just went blank like I'd been clubbered with a hammer. Um, I didn't, didn't expect it more than anyone else. So. Even though um, you know, overnight, really, a lot of the, the memories, things that we did together, how important they were, the way that Steve thought and he talked and, you know, his leadership from the early days and the way he founded things, uh, you know, it's like my head is swirling in it. Those, uh, take us back to those early days. What was it like, the two of you, you know, interested in a lot of the same things, you have this great energy, this great curiosity, and ultimately you end up with your company changing fundamentally the way we all do things across this world. What did you, though, set out to do when the two of you created Apple? It was actually an unbelievably fortunate partnership, but it spoke a lot of life and the, the passion for life and the energy to do things. Steve and I used to, in those days, talk about where life was going for people, what was important, what was right, and what was good, and, and where did things like government fit in and companies and great thinking and those ideas. My role was the, the key technologist, the scientist, the engineer that was building all these devices one after another after another. And Steve was spotting them and seeing place, ways to sell them and talking about where they could go and talking about enhancements and improvements that would take it to the next level. He was always trying to move to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. He was almost pushed by high anxiety and I was just sitting there designing the things I wanted for myself. It wasn't and it was, you know, and it was so wonderful. And we did all the things that young people do, misbehavior, playing around, pranks, talking about ideas of that we features that we could put into products, that sort of thing. Uh, he talked in his comments. So and uh, he was just but, you know, over time, really, after I stayed in the background, I didn't want to run a company. Steve really excelled as like the most incredible person and business person and technology person in the world. And that almost no one could really bring the products that home run after home run after home run, and that bought him the credibility that when Steve introduced something, there were millions of people that would buy it that instant because they trusted it. And it's, you know, it's just hard to, that a person could have ever gotten to that position. And I know it's so sad for all of us because now we worry that are we going to miss what that would have brought us in our future? Um, as as you spoke with him over, over the last few months, I know you saw him at the iPad 2 launch. I mean, he was obviously struggling with his health for a long time. It would seem that he was a person who really liked to control things, uh, whether it was his company, whether it was a launch. How difficult do you think it was for him that he could not control this illness that, that was s slowly taking so much away from him? Um, Steve spoke to me of the illness more recently than a few months ago as something that really did bother him, he, that he, was, he did not like the fact that he had been close to death and sort of survived. And, and it kind of surprised me because a bit he's got a, a logical mind that understands, you know, as he is, as he is quoted to say, in the, that death is really an affirmation of life and it's part of the circle. And, you know, once you have a healthy thinking like that, you, you aren't necessarily bothered. But he spoke like he was very bothered by it. And I don't try to delve into people's personal lives, so I didn't ask deep questions. Well, we appreciate you sharing uh, some of your memories and some of your thoughts with us this morning. And again, our condolences on your loss as well. Thank you for that.